In Shannon is known to many of us as a village we pass through on our way west. But recently, a man on a horse has appeared, and significantly, he symbolises the fact that this small historic village is indeed the very gateway to West Cork. But to find the actual gateway, one must pass down a small boreen just off the main street. Here lies an ancient ford, which was once the only way to cross the Bandon River and into the west itself. Well-known author Alice Taylor is one of the village residents driving forward the recognition of this heritage. The Nishan dates back to the 6th century. It's first mentioned in the Book of Leinster. So it is, it's a very ancient, ancient place. Now I came to Nishan in 1960 when I married him. I suppose I'm, I'm a blue I suppose. But I loved Nishan from the Borgo. And I was looking up, I suppose, I, I married into the village shop. Now if you want to get to know a village, the village shop is the place to be. And all the old men, well to me they were old at the time, now they wouldn't be old anymore. Um, they used to come into the, into the shop and the, after business was done and they'd gather around, they'd discuss everything. And I thought, God, isn't this great? It was like a storytelling session. I developed a huge respect for, you know, the, the value of what we have now and what we had. And we could leave it all slip away so easily. So when I did to school to the seas, um, I was preserving a farm life of the of the forties and fifties. That was hugely important. But then, you know, I went on to do quench the lamp. But the one that really preserved in a Shannon in my head was the village. I wrote about the village and um, the way it was when I came here. But Alice wanted to collect and publish the actual stories from the villagers themselves, and so, the idea of a fundraising Christmas annual was born. All the money that Candlelight made went into a special account. And we said, this is not going to be spent on transient things. This is going to be spent on something that makes a huge statement for Shannon. Then we got the brainwave, we put a, a sculpture for Billy, the blacksmith, because the Candlelight Fund floated it. And the horse, uh, West Cork Development, funded the horse. And uh, they gave 75% and we had to come up with 35%. But we had the money because we had the Candlelight account. Local artist Jerry Larkin is another resident deeply involved within the Shannon's heritage projects. The horse, of course, is symbolic of the whole crossing of the river at the ford of Inishannon. And Inishannon is and was the gateway to West Cork. Uh, it's just terribly important to take to 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 commemorate the medieval importance of Inishannon and its positioning on the Bandon River. So the, the whole project of the horse developed from there. It was the working man's entrance and exit yeah. from the place. Mm. Uh, and what best to symbolise that than a big, bold working horse. Don Cronin, the sculptor who created the horse, is another resident of the area. It really starts with a, with a series of drawings to thrash out a format, let's say. And uh, if the commissioning body like roughly where you're going, then you move on to maybe making a model or a, an artist maquette, you know, which would be a small bronze, ideally. The creative part of it is, is quite quick. I mean, the actual modelling takes no more than maybe six or eight weeks. But the whole casting process is really protracted process, you know. So, I suppose in total it took maybe eight, eight months. There is a thing about public art that uh, a lot of it can be quite anonymous. I mean, you can put something up, you can put something up on one of the main motorways and, you know, no one will ever actually know, they, they might actually like the piece, but nobody ever knows who actually produces these things, you know. Yeah. But I think projects like this are much more, well, they're much more local, if you like. So, I think you're I think, yeah, I think people generally do know who's put these things together and, you know, why they're there. And Inishannon has more heritage plans afoot. 
as I found out when I visited ex-pilot Richard Good Stevenson in his restored castle on the family farm. Richard has a long association with historic buildings and particularly with those of the village. We started work here on the roofless ruin in 1998 um, and we moved back from the UK with my family uh, in 2001 and we've been here since. We've set up a, a, a charity called, uh, which is, a, which is a, a limited company, a registered charity, um, and its, uh, its um, sole purpose is the, is, the, is the protection of the built environment of Inishan. Um, and it's called the Friends of Inishan. It was set up by the people who live here in the community and appreciate yeah. what we have and are worried about losing it. The sort of phase two of our, of our project is a, is a conservation plan for the historical part of the village. We've um, received funding now to um, engage a firm of conservation architects to draw up a conservation plan for the village. And that will basically come up with um, um, suggestions of how existing buildings could be treated in the future. And it's, it's almost like a service for the individual property owners that if in the future they want to do some work, they will have a resource that they can refer to if they're inclined to do it with a, with a historical precedent. And I think it'll probably be the first village in Ireland that will have that resource available to the residents of the village. It seems that a lot has grown from this simple crossing. The village itself, with its rich history, and the energy, commitment and imagination of the people of Inishannon.